welcome to this edition of Everything Home. Today we're going to show you how to change a circuit breaker. Now you don't need a lot of tools. One thing that you will need, uh, and you can use one of these type of voltage testers. Uh, now this is a regular voltage tester here. Uh, but what we're going to do today is we're actually just going to use a non-contact. They call these non-contact voltage testers. And they're really simple because you don't have to actually touch the ground and then the positive to the circuit breaker. All you have to do is touch this to the outgoing side of the circuit breaker to tell if there's power going through it. You'll also need either a screwdriver or a Phillips screwdriver depending on your circuits uh, and some needle nose pliers might help but you might not need these too. So let's go over to the panel and get started on this. Okay so here we are at the main panel. I'm going to show you something here real quick. On these doors normally when you open them up and you get them locked in place they don't give you a lot of room to work some of them have a little bracket that comes up to hold it up but there's not a lot of room there so what we're going to do is we're going to close this back down and then we're going to remove we're not even remove we'll just loosen these two screws enough to be able to unhook these hinges and take this whole door off so let's do that first okay so we're going to just loosen these up and a lot of times these have been painted so they might be a little difficult to get them to loosen up but let's loosen these up like this I'm not going to take them all the way off I just want to get it so we can turn this like that open it up and slide this out of there so that gives us full access to this panel once we have this off then what we're going to do is remove what they call the dead face so we're going to loosen this screw here that's out we're going to remove this and that's going to expose all of our circuits okay now that we've got it all opened up we're going to take a quick look at the circuits here now this one that's a dual 100 amp now that's our main power disconnect basically when you turn this off it's going to de-energize this bar right here that's the bar that's the all the power goes into the circuit and then this is the side where the power is coming out of the circuits. So I'm going to show you, let's test these circuits real quick, figure out which one is not working. Now we know it's either 15 or 20 amp circuit, so it's probably one of these down here. This is a dual 30, which is probably either for our dryer or a water heater, another dual 30, which is either probably dryer or water heater. We've got a dual 50 up here, which is most likely for our range. They don't have them all labeled. But that's what they're probably for. So let's test a few of these circuits here. Now remember this, if a circuit is bad, if, if, if you're flicking the circuit over and, it's, and you're flicking it back like this and it's doing a hard reset to where it's actually flicking back really quick, then that might be that you probably have a short within the system and that's not going to get fixed by just replacing the circuit breaker. Now if your circuit breaker is on and it's actually not going over and you don't have any power coming out of the other side, then it's more than likely that it's the circuit breaker. So let me show you how to test that real quick. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you with the regular digital multimeter uh, how to use this. Basically, we've got it on 200 ACV. And the hard part about this is you've got to touch it to the ground and then you've got to go through to each one of these and test it. It makes it a little bit more difficult to hold on to it and touch it to the ground and touch all of these to see which one's not working. That's why I like the non-contact one. You just turn this on. Once it's on, you can touch it right to the terminal post on it and it'll let you know whether or not it's working or not. And we've already determined this 20 amp circuit is the one that is our problem. So now before we go and remove this, what we're going to do is we're going to come up here and we're going to turn off the main power supply that's going to de-energize this bar over there. So when we turn this off now, you can even see with this, when you touch it to these, there's no power going through them. No power going through those at all, as long as this one's off. So now let's go down here to this 20 amp circuit. And sometimes an easy way to take it off, depends on how the wiring is on the side, but what we're going to just do is we're just going to pull this out. We're going to pull from this side over and then unclick it. 
And you can see right here, this part actually locks in to this area over there. There's a little tab, and then this clicks into the bus bar over here. So on these, they're a little bit older ones. They just have a standard screwdriver. So what we're going to do is just hold that wire right there. Unscrew this wire. And slide this off. This one's easy. A lot of times you're going to have a, a big jungle jumble of wires inside there and it's real difficult to get to but this one's pretty easy so then what we're going to do is we're going to take the new one and kind of just reverse it basically put the wire back in click this end in make sure that locks under those and push this end in and it's back in. So, so now what we're going to do is come back up here and we're going to re-energize this bar. Turn that back on. And then we're going to come back down here. We're going to take our non-contact. We're going to go to this 20 amp circuit. Turn it on. And you can see you know and then you can text see all the powers are going back on this side now too so basically we're done we've changed out that circuit all we have to do is reverse the order and put everything back and there we go we've got everything put back together congratulations